we're going to talk about the five most common mistakes people are making with their credit and how you can avoid them. That's coming up next. Hey everybody, Matthew here. Let's get right to it. The most common mistakes people make in credit, we've narrowed down to the top five. Obviously, you've got to make sure you're paying your bills as agreed. That's the most obvious of behaviors when it comes to developing a really strong credit history. But beyond that, let's go into another five that you may not be quite as familiar with or that may not be as obvious. The first is being aware of your credit. You've really got to make sure that you're looking at it. The most common mistake is people don't look at their credit. So the first thing you need to do is know where you stand, educate yourself. The best place, in my opinion, for you to be watching for credit is Credit Karma. Dot com. Free is obviously very important. We love extra cash flow. There are only two ways to increase cash flow. That's making more money or spending less money. With that in mind, if we can spend less, we're obviously going to have more left over at the end of each month. So I encourage you to start by signing up for creditkarma.com. Get their free app on your smartphone device and go ahead and just start to reference that regularly. It will update every week as opposed to some of the other resources that are out there for credit scores and reports, which update typically much less frequently. Now with that data, you can develop a plan. That's a very important piece to this. You can get in there and start to see the ingredients and various details inside the report that are causing your scores to be what they are. So I love that it's free. I love that they provide you all the details on an updated regular basis. I also love some of the recommendations that they'll make in terms of new credit. It does offer some really great recommendations that also pinpoint your likelihood of approval. And that's very important is knowing whether or not you are likely to get approved. If you ultimately end up with an inquiry hurting your credit and the account ends up being declined, obviously it was all for naught and you end up in worse shape than you were before. Now, second, don't close accounts. Age of credit is very, very important to your overall credit strength. When you close accounts, it will suddenly stop the significance of that activity. And therefore, that account will no longer be contributing positively towards the overall age of your credit. With that in mind, the most important thing is just to allow your accounts to stay open and active forever. Now, there is one rare exception to this, and that's if you have a credit card account that has an annual fee associated with it, there might be justification for closing that, assuming that your credit has a lot of depth, meaning many open and active accounts, whereby closing that account will have limited, if any, impact against you. But even then, if your credit scores are experiencing a shallowness because you don't have a lot of open and active accounts, it would probably make sense for you to consider continuing to pay that annual fee in order to continue to develop credit. And then once your credit has depth, you can go ahead and cancel that account then. Third, is swearing off credit cards for good. In order to get great credit, you have to have credit, folks. So having a gap in credit history will make it harder later when you're trying to buy a home or whether you're trying to buy a car or just get any financing whatsoever, such as the debt weapons that we talk about. Not using credit cards can also have the same effect if you have complete inactivity. We've even seen where people's credit scores actually vanish. It's possible to not even have a credit score due to inactivity. So make sure that you are not only getting access to, but using your credit regularly. This is a big one. The fourth is co-signing for somebody else. So make sure that co-signing is avoided. There's not any point in time where co-signing really makes sense. Of course, there are times where you can't avoid it. For example, buying a property often requires two borrowers on the loan application because both members of a household might be bringing in the income necessary to qualify for the lending. However, that's the only circumstance that I would recommend co-signing. There are ways where you can add somebody to your account as an authorized user or vice versa. If you're looking at building credit, there's a technique that's been discussed for well over a decade known as piggybacking. And piggybacking is where being added to someone else's account can actually boost your credit scores. Just know that co-signing is not a good idea. Many unforeseeable circumstances can lead to your credit getting trashed just because you put your name next to somebody else's. I don't care what the status of the relationship is, whether it be your child, whether it be your spouse, whether it be your lifelong best friend, there's really not any justifiable reason that you would associate your individual independent credit scores and reports with someone else. There is no rec recognition of relationships when it comes to the FICO credit scoring model. It doesn't care whether you're married or single. So keep in mind, your credit will always be attached to you and only you. And therefore, it's very important to make sure that you treat that 
with the utmost sensitivity. The fifth and final mistake people make is having a misunderstanding of the side effects of bad credit. High interest on credit cards is the most obvious. But beyond loans and insurance premiums being higher, you can also see a higher risk with applications for places to live, with resumes and job applications being submitted, and even security clearances with certain positions. So it goes well beyond not being approved for loans. Simply ignoring the side effects of having less than perfect credit scores can cost you enormous sums over the course of years. So make sure that you're keeping a very close eye on avoiding these very common pitfalls that we see people fall into. Guys, I just wanna say thanks so much for tuning into the channel. Make sure that you like and share the information that you find valuable and leave some comments below regarding your experience with using credit and how you have personally avoided mistakes. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks so much for tuning in.